Hi, today we're going to be working with Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint um, to do two things. We want to take this JPEG of this car. We want to drop the background to give it a to give it a transparent background, and I also want to add a cool neon kind of glow around it. So let's see how we might go about doing that. This is a high resolution. Uh, bitmap 300 dpi that I got from a clip art website. It is a JPEG, so by definition the background will not be transparent. I can demonstrate that by putting this yellow square behind it, and you can see that it does have a, a white background. We're going to want to get rid of that, and uh, we're going to do that by converting it to a Corel bitmap. So I go up here to bitmap, convert to bitmap, I'm going to use a low resolution RGB, red, green, blue, because it's for the monitor, just for the uh, video that I'm doing. And um, keep in mind your end user. Uh, if this was for offset printing or screen printing or anything like that, I would want to use a high resolution to work with. I can't tell you how many times someone has brought me artwork for printing and they've spent many hours creating it in a low res or a small size. And all you can do at that point is do the best you can with the low res or ask the person to start from scratch and do it over, which is no fun. Nobody wants to do something again that's, that, that they've already spent uh, some time on. So always uh, use the proper resolution for your end result. But in this case, low res is going to be fine. Transparent background. Make sure that's selected. So now it's not a JPEG anymore. It's a Corel transparent bitmap. Of course, it still has a white background. So to get rid of that, I'm going to go to Photo Paint. I'm going to click Edit Bitmap. That's going to take me to Corel Photo Paint like that. And that's what I like about Corel. You can go back and forth between Photo Paint and Draw as you please. Um, I'm going to have to create a mask for this, and um, that's going to be pretty easy because the edges of this image are pretty well defined. So I'm going to go up to my mask flyout here. I'm going to choose my magic wand, and what the magic wand does is it detects edges and tries to create a mask around the edges. Um, this is fairly well defined, so I can use a low tolerance. Uh, you might want to Depending on what you have going on back here, you might have to adjust your tolerances. But for this, I think I'm going to be fine just by creating that mask. Now you can see the car and the shadow are masked off. To get rid of the background, I can either click my little scissors up here, which is cut, or I can use a keyboard shortcut, Control x which cuts my background away. That light green represents the transparency. That's just what I have set on my defaults. I also want to do that on my shadow down here, cut, and now I have a transparent background. I've gotten rid of my shadow too, so I can go up here at Exit Photo Paint. It will ask me if I want to save my changes, which I do. And that brings us back to Corel Draw, and as you can see, we have dropped our background and the shadow. So now we've done that step and now we want to create our cool neon glow. Uh, let's do that by copying our car like this. Copy and paste it. So now we have two cars, one on top of the other. I'm going to select my top one. I'm going to go to bitmaps again, convert to bitmap. This time I'm going to choose grayscale right here. That turns it into like a black and white kind of illustration. I'll go up here to effects, adjust, tone curve, and that'll bring up my tone curve. And the, the job of the tone curve is to adjust the contrast of a bitmap. So I can work on this end on my shadow areas, make them darker or lighter. I can make my highlight areas lighter or darker, my mid-tones, whatever I want. But in this case, I want the whole thing to be as dark as possible. So I'm just going to drag that down there. 
preview, and that's about what I had in mind. So it looks like it's black, but this is still a grayscale bitmap. So I'll go up here to bitmap once more, convert to bitmap. Now I'm going to convert it to a one-bit black and white monochrome bitmap. If, if you're familiar with that, uh, you know that the background can be one color and your object can be another color. So I can left-click with my mouse for my background and right-click with my mouse for my object. And uh, in this case, I don't want any background, so I'm going to click No Fill with my left mouse button. And I'm going to click Black with my right mouse button. Now the reason I did that is because I now want to trace it with my power trace, so that'll create a vector object. So line art, I'm just going to power trace it. OK. And now we have our vector, our monochrome bitmap, and our original, all stacked up on top of another, one another. And um, so now if I click that, that's my vector. If I want to go down one layer and get my monochrome bitmap, I'm going to do that using my dig command. And the, the way you dig is you hold down your alternate key, left mouse button, and now my monochrome bitmap is selected. I'm going to drag that out here and click delete because I don't need that anymore. It served its purpose. Now I have my vector tracing and my original. I'm going to use alternate again, alt click to select my original bitmap, bring that to the front, and I'm going to get rid of it for a minute by clicking control X or my scissors key. That cuts it and now it's on my clipboard. Because what I want to do with this vector is ungroup it and just kind of get rid of that inside stuff. See those white windows and all that. I want to just delete those. And now I'm going to fill this with a 50% black. And I'm going to right click on 50% to create an outline. I'll open up my outline menu using my F12 key. Or I can find it on my menu here. And I'll go Make a pretty thick outline. I'm going to go, I don't know, 28 points. Round corners. And I don't have to worry about these here. That gives it a nice thick outline. Now remember my original is on my clipboard, so I'll put that back down there. And this gray is going to become my glow. So I want to use my dig tool to select my vector. I'm going to convert that again to a bitmap. Convert to grayscale bitmap. Right there. And now that it's a bitmap, I can blur it. Bitmap, blur. I'm going to give it a Gaussian blur, which will blur it in all directions by a specific number of pixels. And I'm going to start with, uh, oh, I don't know, 15 pixels. That's my radius. I can give it as much of a blur or as little of a blur as I like. So I'm going to preview that. I kind of like that. I think I want to go a little bit lower. Let's go to 11. Yeah, let's go back up here. See, you can play with this and get it how you want. I think that'll work. 15. Okay, I'm going to go one more step here with my bitmaps. Bitmap mode. Because I want to Convert my grayscale to a black and white once again. Choose line art here. And on my threshold, I want to move that up a little bit. So that when I preview it, my preview looks like my original. So click OK. Now what I've done is converted my grayscale into a black and white. So the background, once again, can be one color, left mouse. And the foreground can be another color right mouse. To get rid of my background, I'll click No Fill up here with my left mouse button. No Fill. And now I have my cool neon glow. And now I can have some fun. Let me put a 
black background here to get that full neon effect. Black background, put it in the back, and uh, can have fun with my monochrome by changing colors to whatever I like. I can give it a yellow glow or bright green or gold, back to pink, whatever I like. light blue. So as you can see, you have lots of options. Um, not only color, but the thickness of your outline, the amount of blur. Um, there's many different effects you can, you can achieve uh, to make it look exactly the way you want. So if you like this video, smash that like button. I just wanted to say that. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, experiment with this. You can use any raster object you like. You might have a little bit more trouble with the background. Uh, there are other videos on my channel about how to drop difficult backgrounds. And uh, work with this. Try different things. And I hope your next project goes well.